time to get busy at this motherfucker. Like we always do about this time. Yeah. Welcome to Hip Hop History. This week, we're going to be talking about Doggy Style, the first album from legendary artist Snoop Dogg. In 1992, Snoop came to the attention of the music industry through his contributions on Dr. Dre's The Chronic. The album is considered to have transformed the entire sound of West Coast rap. This included the development of G-Funk. Snoop first contributed vocals to Dre's solo single for a soundtrack, Deep Cover, which led to anticipation for the release of his own album. Doggy Style and The Chronic are associated with each other mainly because each prominently featured Snoop Dogg and because both contained G-Funk style production from Dr. Dre. These two releases also have a high number of vocal contributions from Death Row Records artists including The Dog Pound, RBX, and The Lady of Rage. In addition, the two albums were viewed by critics as early G-Funk classics and have been described as joined at the hit. Doggy Style also marked the debut of Death Row vocalist Nancy Fletcher, the daughter of jazz legend Sam Fletcher. Doggy Style is the debut studio album from Snoop Doggy Dog, and it was released on November 23rd, 1993 by Death Row Records and Interscope Records. The album was recorded and produced following Snoop's appearance on Dr. Dre's debut solo album, The Chronic, released in 1992, to which Snoop contributed significantly. The West Coast style and hip-hop that he developed from Dre's first album continued on Doggy Style. The style was and is called G-Funk. Despite some mixed criticism of the album upon its release, Doggy Style earned recognition from many as one of the most significant albums of the 90s, as well as one of the most important hip-hop albums ever released. Much like The Chronic, the distinctive sounds of Doggy Style helped introduce the hip-hop subgenre G-Funk to the mainstream audience, bringing forward West Coast hip-hop as a dominant force in the early 90s. Up until this point, most of the music that was coming out and was meaningful was from the East Coast, most significantly New York. Doggy Style debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, selling 806,858 copies in its first week in the United States, which was the record for a debut artist and the fastest selling hip hop album ever. The album was certified four times platinum by the RIAA. By November 2015, the album had sold 7 million copies in the United States and over 11 million copies worldwide. Doggy Style was recorded in early 1993 at Death Row Studios. Snoop collaborated with two music groups, 213 and The Dog Pound, which 213 is Nate Dogg, Snoop Dogg, and Warren G, and The Dog Pound is Daz Dillinger and Corrupt. Daz Dillinger accused Dr. Dre of taking sole recognition for producing the album and alleged that Warren G and himself contributed substantially to the production of the project. Death Row Records co-founder Marion Shug Knight stated in 2013 that Daz pretty much did the whole album and that credit was signed over to Dr. Dre for a fee. Snoop said Dre was capable of making beats without help of collaborators and addressed the issues with Warren G and Daz stating they made beats Dre produced that record. He discussed the track Ain't No Fun, mentioning that Daz and Warren G brought Dr. Dre the beat, but Dre took that motherfucker to the next level. Dr. Dre mixed the album and inserted the skits within 48 hours, which enabled the album to be released. Rolling Stone writer Jonathan Gold described how Dr. Dre produced the beat from scratch to complete instrumental. Dre may find something he likes from an old drum break, loop it, and gradually replace each part with a better tom-tom sound, a kick drum sound he adores, and so the beat bears the same relationship to the original that the Incredible Hulk does to Bill Bixby. While recording Dog style with Dre in August 1993, Broadus was arrested in connection with the death of Philip Walter Marion, a member of a rival gang who was shot and killed in a fight. According to the charges, the rapper's bodyguard McKinley Lee shot Walter Marion as Broadus drove the vehicle. The rapper claimed it was self-defense, alleging the victim was stalking him. He spent most of 1995 preparing the case, which went to trial in late 1995. He was cleared of all charges in February of 1996 and began working on his second album, The Dog Father. Gangster rap has been criticized for its extreme lyrics, which are often accused of of glamorizing gang violence and black on black violence. A number of artists responded that they were simply describing the realities of the life in their respective hometowns, Long Beach and Compton. Describing Doggy Style in 1993, Snoop points to the album's realism and the extent to which it is based on his personal experience. He said, I can't rap about something I don't know. Y'all never hear me rapping about no bachelor's degree. It's only what I know, and that's the street life. It's all everyday life, reality. Explaining his intention, Snoop claims that he feels he is a role model to many young black men and that his songs are designed to relate to the concerns. So little kids growing up in the ghettos, he said, it's easy to get into the wrong type of things, especially gangbanging and selling drugs. I've seen what that is like, and I don't glorify it, but I don't preach. I bring it to them rather than them have to go find out about it themselves. He further explained that the dream that he would pursue after making the album is, I'm going to try to eliminate the gang violence. I'll be on a mission for peace. I know I have a lot of power. The album's title alludes to the doggy style sex position and is a reference to the musician's name. The artwork, which was done by artist Joe Cool, represents the themes covered in the album, and the style is an implementation of those ideas. Ideas. Some critics believe the artwork portrays a woman merely as a whole to be filled by a man, which they believe adheres to the narcissistic and sexist lyrical themes Snoop covers. In his interpretation, the cover art and lyrics convey what they refer to as self-indulgent gangster lifestyle, drugs, cars, sex, and money. The artwork uses several quotes from the 1982 George 
split and single Atomic Doll. The quotes come from the dogs at the top of the brick wall on the album cover, which say, Why must I feel like that? Why must I chase the cat? Nothing but a dog in me. Dre's handling of the production was praised by critics. Torre noted, The chronic slow, heavy beats were a sonic representation of angry depression as accurate as Cobain's feedback blasts. Doggy Style is a leaner, with its high tempo, Isaac Hayes, and Curtis Mayfield derived tracks. I usually don't include music critic quotes, but I feel like this note from famed journalist Torre was important and really describes the feel of what Dre and Snoop were doing as compared to Kurt Cobain. Snoop lyrics were generally praised by critics as well, although they caused some controversy. He was praised for the realism in his rhymes and his flows, a one-of-a-kind flow, smooth, slow, and effortless, but matched Dre's bass-heavy producing. Snoop's lyrics were his description of his adolescent urges, freely talking of casual sex, smoking marijuana, gunning down rival gang members, gunplay, drug dealing, and pimping. Many publications such as the New York Times would go on to say the concepts and lyrics were delivered in the crudest and rudest terms. Some critics say Snoop was obsessed with being a G, a gangster, a lawbreaker who smokes dope and kills with impunity, and that his lyrics depict the black-on-black -black crime in the inner cities. The lyrics involve many derogatory terms against women with expressions such as bitches and hoes being used throughout, which illustrates the feeling of sexism and oppression with American society. This is what the media has always said about these terms, but in many places the word bitch would be a term of endearment. Now breaking down the lyrics themselves, you can derive your own interpretation. Snoop lyrics depict drugs, sex, alcohol, and money as methods of escape from oppression. They also show a side of the gangster lifestyle and the results of following that lifestyle. The lyrics also generated controversy with C. Dolores Tucker of the National Political Congress of Black Women. She named gangster rap a profane and obscene glorification of murder and rape, which can be attributed to doggy style. Clearly, this didn't do much to Snoop as he is Snoop. Now let's go through the track list and who wrote the tracks and some samples. We're going to take a short ad break here and get right back to the show. Thanks for listening to that ad. Now back to the show. Bathtub, written by Calvin Broaddus Jr. Samples include Give Me Your Love by Curtis Mayfield, The Shalimar by The Last Poets, and The American Dream by Superfly. G-Funk Intro, written by Broaddus and Robin Allen. Samples include Aqua Boogie by The Parliament and Knee Deep by Funkadelic. Gin and Juice, featuring Daz, written by Broaddus, Andre Young, Harry Wayne, and Richard Finch. Samples include I Get Lifted by George McRae, Watching You by Slay, Long Red by Mountain, and Bitches Ain't Shit by Dr. Dre, Snoop, Daz Dillinger, Corrupt, and Jewel. W Balls Interlude, written by Broadus samples Flashlight by Parliament. The Shiznit, written by Broadus and Young, samples include The Stranger by Billy Joel, Flashlight by Parliament, Can You Fly by Sons of Champlin, and Gin and Juice by Snoop and Daz Dillinger. Domino Intro Interlude, written by Broadus. Lottie Dottie, featuring Nancy Fletcher, written by Broadus, Douglas Davis, Hachada Nakamura, E. Rokusuki, and Ricky Walters, and is a sample of Lottie Dottie by Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick, and it samples Rapper Dapper Snapper by Edwin Birdsong. Murder Was a Case, featuring Daz, written by Broadus, Young and Delmar Arnold. Samples include Fried Neck Bones by Santana, Indo Smoke by Mr. Grime and Warren G, Little Ghetto Boy by Dr. Dre, Snoop and Daz, and Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep by Traditional Folk. Serial Killer, featuring the DOC, The Dog Pound, and RBX. Samples include Funky Worm by Ohio Players, A Who Say Me Doom by Cuddy Ranks, Criminal Minded by Boogie Down Productions, Mosh It Up by Just Ice and KRS One, and Ready for Dim by Naughty by Nature and Heavy D. Who Am I? What's My Name? Written by Broadus, Young, George Clinton, Gary Scheider, and David Spradley. Samples include Pack of Lies by The Counts, Atomic Dog by George Clinton, Give Up the Funk by Parliament, Knee Deep by Funkadelic, P Funk by Parliament, 187 by Dr. Dre and Snoop, Rat Tat Tat by Dr. Dre, RBX, Snoop, and D's Nuts by Dr. Dre, Snoop, Daz Dillinger, Nate Dogg, and Warren G. For All Might and Bitches, featuring The Dog Pound and The Lady of Rage, written by Broadus, Arnaud, Ricardo Brown, and Allen, includes samples Don't Give a Fuck by The Dog Pound and Snoop. Ain't No Fun If The Homies Can't Have None, featuring Nate Dogg, Warren G, and Corrupt, written by Broadus, Young, Brown, Nathaniel Hale, and Warren Griffin. Samples include A Few More Kisses to Go by Isaac Hayes, Think About It by Lynn Collins, Indo Smoke by Mr. Grime, and Warren G, Blue Suede Shoes by Carl Perkins, and Turn Off the Radio by Ice Cube. Chronic Relief Intro Interlude, written by Broadus. Doggy Dog World, featuring the Dog Pound and the Dramatics, written by Broadus, Arnaud, Brown, Richard Dimples Fields, James Harris III, and Terry Lewis. Samples include Summer Madness by Cool in the Game, If It Ain't One Thing, It's Another by Richard Dimples Fields, I Didn't Come to Rhyme by George Clinton, Best of My Love by The Emotions, This Old Man by The Traditional Folk, and Firecrackers Lit with a Match by Sound Ideas. Last 
group intro interlude written by Broadus, Jeez and Hustlers featuring Nancy Fletcher written by Broadus, Arnon, and Don Blackman. Samples include Hobo Globe Drotten by Bernard Wright and Nothing But a G Thing by Dr. Dre and Snoop. Check in interlude written by Broadus and Young. Jeez Up, Hose Down written by Broadus, Young, and Arnon. Samples include The Look of Love Live at the Sahara Tahoe by Isaac Hayes. This track was only included on the first pressing due to sample clearances. It was re-released on the compilation album in 2006, 15 Years of Death Row. Pump Pump featuring Little Malik written by Broadus Young, Jamal Phillips, Malik Edwards was left off the album. Original Presents in Europe features track names for all interludes. The interlude track names listed above are taken from said European release. W Balls was the only interlude listed on the original American release. All interludes including W Balls were later omitted from all track listings. The original Presents of the album which contains Jesus Pose Down lists an outro track titled The Next Episode but does not feature on any Presents of the album. A low quality recording of the song later leaked online sometime in the late 2000s. The next episode, produced by and featuring Dr. Dre, was listed on the track list provided to Reed Taylors before the album's release, but does not feature on any presence of the album. Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre later recorded a track titled The Next Episode for Dre's second album, 2001, which was completely different from the original. Doggy Style featuring Jewel and George Clinton was recorded during the album sessions, but remained unreleased until its inclusion on the compilation album Death Row The Lost Sessions. The Root of All Evil outro featuring Tina Marie was recorded during the album sessions, but remained unreleased until its inclusion on the compilation album Death Row The Last Sessions. The instrumental was later significantly reworked and used for the remix of California Love by Tupac and Dr. Dre. Every Every single day featured Corrupt, Jewel, and Nate Dogg was recorded during the album sessions, but remained unreleased until the alternate version was released on the Dog Pound compilation 2002. The album has been included in Rolling Stone's Essential Recordings of the 90s and the 500 Greatest Albums of All Time, amongst other lists putting it in the same position. Doggy Style is a certified classic, not a West Coast classic, just a classic album, period. Snoop has been in the game for 20 plus years. Turn this podcast off immediately and go to your streaming service and listen to Doggy Style. Thank you for listening to this episode of Hip Hop History. Please like, subscribe, and leave a review if possible. Thank you. You can also follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop History Pod.